Uh, good afternoon. My name's David Rudock from SolarFlare, and I thought I'd just start with a few words about uh, SolarFlare, because we're not probably terribly well known in the security market yet. Um, the place where we've really got ourselves going and are well known is in the electronic trading world. Um, and the reason that we're well known there is that we give absolutely the highest level of performance for getting packets from a network into a server and getting packets from a server out onto the network again. Um, now, in the world of electronic trading, time means money, so they need to get the packets in and out as quickly as possible. And because we give the best performance, um, we're used by 9 out of 10 of the world's biggest uh, electronic exchanges and all the traders and brokers and investment banks and all those folks use us. Um, now, what I'm going to talk about today is how we can throw away packets at millions of packets per second, um, which is almost the opposite. So I'm particularly thinking about denial of service attacks. So um, what's happening is you, you're providing some service over the network, and uh, you obviously need to give good service to your real customers, but you're being hit by a whole load of bad traffic, which is trying to bring your service down. Oops. Thank you. Um, and uh, the key challenge is how do you spot the bad stuff and get rid of it quickly before it causes you damage. Now, what I don't help you with is how do you spot the bad stuff per se. I'm assuming that you've got some technology that will allow you to identify the bad traffic and say, the bad traffic has this particular characteristic that I can spot. And then what my technology will do will say, given those characteristics, we'll get rid of the bad stuff for you. And there are really two sorts of characteristics that you can look for. First of all, network level which is looking at things in the packet headers. So things like IP addresses, port numbers, uh, which service is being attacked. If you can identify things on that level, then it's a relatively simple job to throw them away cheaply. The second level is request level, and this is where you're digging into the actual content of the packets, perhaps the TCP payload, HTTP headers, actual content, and that requires a more sophisticated level of filtering um, normally called deep packet inspection. And the challenge there is doing this matching at, at very high rates in a scalable way. Now, the nature of a DDoS attack is that it's trying to bottleneck some resource. And when you get that bottleneck, two things happen. First of all, the queues that are feeding into that bottlenecked resource start to fill up. And wherever you have queuing, you have delays. So that means that your customers will start to see delays and the responsiveness of your service will go down. Secondly, those queues will inevitably become full and start dropping something, usually requests. And at that point, your service will appear to be at best intermittent and possibly even down. So that's what we're trying to avoid. We need to identify the bad traffic, throw it on the floor before you get to the bottlenecked resource so that the bottlenecked resource is only used for the good traffic. So the, the implication of that is that you need to spot the bad traffic early before the bottleneck resource. And one way of doing that is do the blocking at the network edge. And there are a bunch of technologies for doing that. So things like routers, which are good for spotting um, network level um, characteristics like IP addresses and port numbers, or firewall appliances that can perhaps do deep packet inspection and that sort of thing. Now, the the... There are products in the market that will do this, but there are certain challenges. In particular, these things are eye-wateringly expensive. Um, so what we're offering is a solution that's somewhat cheaper and more scalable. So what we're offering is DDoS protection at the end server. So as I said, what we provide is a network adapter. So it's just a way of getting packets in and out of your server. But within that network adapter, we're providing a layer of filtering capability. And the additional scalability comes from the fact that you've got one of these in each of your servers. So on the one hand, if you've got a small number of servers, this is a solution that's incredibly cheap because it doesn't cost you very much more than a regular network adapter. If you've got a very large number of servers, it scales to a staggering level of performance because for every new server that you deploy, you get an additional capability to throw packets on the floor. Because it's integrated with a network adapter, it spots the bad traffic at the earliest possible moment at the server. So it's not as early as at the network edge, but it's much, much better than doing it 
within the software um, in the kernel stack or in your application. Um, and that's what allows us to absorb attacks at a high rate without having collateral damage on your good traffic. We can do both network level uh, matching and also request level, so we'll spot things like IP addresses and port numbers. Um, it's a, effectively, at a technical level, it's a programmable microcode engine. So you effectively write a little program for this thing that identifies the characteristics of the bad traffic, and we can then throw them on the floor. We also support request level matching, so this is pattern matching within your flow of your actual TCP level flow, and there's also some support there for HTTP requests, so you can look at things like URIs and HTTP headers and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so what does the performance look like? So just a quick word about the test that we're running here. So we've got a server. It's the, the actual test that I did this on was a, a server a couple of years old, so it's nothing special in terms of performance. Um, we're running the Nginx web server, single worker process, so we're only using one core for the application. We're also using one CPU core for the actual network processing, for the interrupt processing. So two cores in total, giving you this level of performance. Um, we're hitting this server with a constant rate of good traffic. So our good customers are generating 40,000 connections per second of traffic. So, you know, you've already got a pretty decent amount of traffic here just from the good guys. And that represents about 90% of the capacity of this particular web server configuration. So you can go a little bit faster than that before you bottleneck it. What we're plotting is the achieved good put. So good put means what do our good clients see? And we're plotting that against the rate of the bad traffic. So the x-axis here is showing you how hard the bad guys are hitting us. So when the bad guys aren't hitting us at all, we achieve 40,000 connections per second. When the bad guys hit us with 2.5 million packets per second, that's the point at which, with our solar secure filter engine, we start to get some collateral damage on this server. Now, the normal way of doing this on the end server would be using an OS firewalling technology. In the case of Linux, that would be IP tables. Um, and IP tables is able to do the sort of network level matching, IP headers and that sort of stuff. And, and in that case, you know, it does a reasonable job. You can still get a, nearly a million packets per second through before it starts having an impact. But the key thing is by doing it much early with the Solar Secure filter engine, we can absorb a much higher level of load before you start to get collateral damage on your good traffic. Now, bear in mind, I said that this is using just two cores on the server. And we can scale that traffic across <coughs> multiple cores. In other words, we can take the packets and distribute them over multiple cores. And the performance that you can achieve scales up. So it's no problem at all to throw away millions and millions of packets per second. And by the time you've got to 15 million packets per second, that's the max you can get on a 10 gig link anyway. OK, so that was the network level uh, matching, which is the easy one. This is request level matching. Now, the normal way to do request level matching on the ENDS host is to actually do it within the web server itself. So um, in this example, we've taken the configuration that one of our customers has, and what they do today is they match using uh, effectively regular expressions on some of the HTTP headers in the web server. Um, and we're doing the same filtering in Solar Secure, but we're doing it, as I said before, at the adapter level, so much, much earlier. Now, the problem with doing request level matching in the web server itself is that by the time you realize you've got a bad request, you've already done a whole load of work. You've already had to set up the connection, accept that connection into the application, receive some data, perform a match on the headers. Then you decide you don't like it, and you can throw the connection away. But that's actually probably 80% of the work that you need to do for a small request. And for that reason, when you're using that method, you only need a very small amount of attack traffic before it starts bottlenecking that server and bringing your good put down. Whereas with the Solar Secure Filter Engine, you can absorb more than 10 times the number of bad connections per second before you have any impact at all on the performance of your web server. So it really is a very, very effective way of getting rid of the bad stuff. So in summary, what this solution is giving you is a very effective, very cost-effective um, and very scalable solution to the problem of 
throwing packets on the floor. And the really key thing that's nice about this is you don't have to buy special dedicated equipment. This is just a regular network adapter from SolarFlare plus an extra bit of software driver that does this job for you. So that's one application that you can run on our network adapters. And I'm now going to talk about another one, which is packet capture. So, sorry, I have it. Yeah? Two, bit, two minutes. OK. Um, so packet capture is normally done in one of two ways, either with a regular adapter using standard OS software, and that can give you about up to a few hundred thousand packets per second on a really fast server, or it's done with really expensive dedicated capture cards, and that can get you to line rate millions of packets per second. So we can do the same thing with our regular network adapters, special software called Solar Capture, and that'll give you millions of packets per second saved into the server or onto the disk. But it's also more flexible than those, regular, than those dedicated capture card solutions because it really is just a network adapter. So you can use it here. You've got an application sending and receiving packets on the network. And you can then sniff a copy of those packets using solar capture. So as well as capturing packets off the network, you can capture the what's flowing in and out of your server. And this gets really cool when you have virtualization because you can see what's going into and out of a particular virtual machine. It allows you to do some hardware and software filtering. It allows you to replay packets from disk, so load packets from a PCAP file, replay them in real time, speed them up, slow them down, that sort of thing. So we've got the ability to send, we've got the ability to receive. We can do this at many millions of packets per second. So we can also use this technology to connect networks together in flexible ways. Now, like that, it's just a really, really expensive piece of wire. But what it does allow you to do is combine these, fe these features, sending and receiving, filtering, uh, munging packets, combine them in custom ways to achieve a specialized function. So that might be some specialized fun firewalling or some specialized DDoS protection or whatever you need to achieve that can't be done just using regular off-the-shelf components. So it gives you very high level of performance and a very high level of customizability. So in summary, that's a set of off-the-shelf tools for doing packet capture that is more flexible and much cheaper than the specialized capture devices. And it's a flexible framework, a programming API, for constructing very high-performance uh, custom applications for layer two packet processing. And the really key thing about this stuff is it's these very specialized functions that normally you have to pay special money, very high amounts of money for, but you can do it using regular network adapters. That's all. Thank you very much. David, thank you very much indeed.